That's a lot of nuts. I miss the old I dubs, the content cop I dubs, the not a cuck I dubs. Looks good in green I dubs. I hate the new I dubs, the bad news I dubs. Gave up his crew I dubs. The is making a conscious effort to grow and learn from the mistakes he made as an edgy teenager I dubs. Nah, that doesn't rhyme. Hey, that's pretty good. Now the iDubs drama has been going on for at this point several years. It's got a lot of nuances to it and a ton of information that I didn't really look into, but it's important that we cover it in this video because if we don't, what else am I gonna clickbait the thumbnail with? If you don't know who iDubs is, he is one of the largest YouTubers on the platform. And many years ago, he was basically the largest creator that would announce videos that would do tens of millions of views in a series called Content Cop, where he would make videos critiquing, satirizing, and basically tearing down other creators that he found to be unsavory in one way or another. These videos grew to rapid success. People loved watching them and sharing them because it felt like a smaller YouTuber taking jabs at some of the giants on the platform at the time. They were informative, valid criticism, and stirred the pot in a way that everybody could enjoy. Kind of like when I yell racial slurs at the dementia clinic. Even before iDubs found major success in his content cop series, he was relatively well known on YouTube as one of the collaborators alongside Filthy Frank, a tremendously popular, edgy, I guess you could say, YouTuber back in the day. Though I wasn't personally a fan of that content when I was watching YouTube at that age, I've been told that a lot of people hold those videos very dear to their heart, gross, outdated, and edgy as they may be. Or at least that's what the waitresses at Hooters tell me as I'm ordering my mojitos. While people like Filthy Frank have moved on to a major music career and have done their best to try and distance themselves from the content they made back in the day when they were young, edgy teenagers, at the time that iDubs was making these content cop videos, they worked in his favor because the edgy humor that garnered his audience of people who loved edgy humor also thoroughly enjoyed the idea of watching him tear down these other big successful creators that had some negative aspects of their personality that he would shine to light. I'll be the first one to admit that I didn't really watch videos from any of the people mentioned in Content Cop or even iDubbbz's videos at the time. It's a little bit easy for me to look back on videos that he made criticizing people like Ricegum, Keemstar, Leafy is Here, Tana Mojo, all of which have had some number of controversies since the introductions of their Content Cop videos that have led me to believe that he probably had a relatively keen eye for searching out people that maybe had negative aspects of themselves that aren't necessarily overly represented with how popular they were on the platform. But you live by the sword, you die by the sword. When you build a large enough platform, a big enough audience of people on the internet, they're typically going to share an identity with the content that you make. Which is why everybody who subscribed to my channel is one of the sexiest mother alive. But for iDubs, who is primarily making content in a negative light, tearing down what was the most popular and showing the downfall or perceived downfall of what other people have loved and dedicated a ton of their time to watching and enjoying and celebrating, he ended up with a large audience of people who were very excited to watch a creator fall. People who are willing to take any negative aspect of somebody who was popular on the internet and drag it down to the point where it becomes the only thing that anybody talks about and using that to paint a negative light on the creator. So... When iDubs found himself in a situation where his girlfriend at the time, Anissa, started an OnlyFans account, the internet ate him alive. Now, in hindsight, this didn't really seem like that big of a deal, at least now in that isolated incident of his girlfriend announcing that she would be launching an OnlyFans. That in and of itself wasn't really a reason to dogpile on iDubs. I mean, he was relatively radio silent about the entire endeavor, so the first, like, 12 hours where people commenting, oh my god, what does your boyfriend think of this? With Anissa responding that he's completely in support, leading to people labeling him a cuck and a simp. My point being that there isn't really a level of hypocrisy with iDubbbz's girlfriend deciding to make an OnlyFans for whatever reason. It's not like iDubbbz has made some sort of big video and garnered this massive audience around hating on sex workers, nude modeling, lewd cosplays, or whatever else might be on the OnlyFans account, okay? So it felt a little bit weird that people take this big of a stance about it. And at first, I can stand by that. Everybody is going to make their jokes. Of course, it's a little bit of a funny situation to take a look at the god of criticism and commentary, have this very obvious thing that you can poke fun of it for. But that's really all it was. Surface level jokes that didn't seem to really go anywhere other than a slow news week and people having something to talk about on Twitter up until iDubbbz posted his response to his YouTube channel in a now infamous video. Uh, hallmarked and monumented as the fall of iDubbbz as it were. iDubbbz uploads a video titled Sex Workers iDubbbz Complains in which he shares his opinions and thoughts on sex work, OnlyFans, 
obviously specifically pertaining to his girlfriend's announcement of starting OnlyFans. And this very much, like I said, marked where people started to look down on iDubs. And I don't want to like put too heavy of a hand on it, but this was definitely the beginning of the end for the golden age, the the worshipping era, the iDubs can do no wrong era. Before this point, before this upload on his channel, everything he uploaded would do 5 million views no problem. From him just exploring TikToks, to ranking fast food, to ranking US presidents, the latter video of which I make a cameo in, believe it or not. There were some good opinions, uh, and there were some not so good opinions. Chick-fil-A is F tier. That's definitely getting an F tier. They should not be a freaking restaurant. I think I have to put Taco Bell at D tier. Now this is an interesting era in the iDubs saga because this is when I first discovered iDubs. For whatever reason, the video that he made ranking fast food ended up being the first iDubs video that ever showed up on my YouTube home feed that I ended up clicking on, watching, and thoroughly enjoying. I was a tiny YouTuber at this point. I don't even think I collaborated with Internet Historian at this point. We're talking sub 2,000 subscribers. I didn't really discover iDubs in the era of him making fun of people in Content Cop. I just saw him as like an everyday YouTuber. Obviously, I discovered the Content Cop videos after this point. But it was really just his videos doing whatever, getting millions and millions of views that made me think, hey, I could kind of just be myself. I don't need to be this big documentary, commentary, drama, chasing, whatever. I can just talk about stuff that I find interesting. It's working out for this guy just fine. When iDubs uploaded this video response talking about his opinion on sex workers, it was a completely different vibe, a total shift in tone for the iDubs channel. Everything he had uploaded before this was either relatively whimsical and almost felt like nobody cared but he was very passionate about, all the way up to these well-documented, scripted, comedy-driven, satirical comment cop videos that resulted in something like this, where he was speaking about his opinions on sex work, but the entire thing felt weak. A lack of energy, gusto, personality was completely absent. It was like iDubs was on camera, but he also wasn't in the room. And as his audience resonated with him so much and personified with him so much, they felt as if it was happening to them. Again, the important takeaway isn't necessarily what iDubs meant when he made that video, whether it was just maybe a, a poor execution of a quickly written script in order to express his honest views and feelings on the matter. Uh, but it didn't feel that way. At the very least, it felt like there was a level of uncertainty that was enough for the trolls who were feeding off of the downfall of iDubs to continue to eat. The next chapter to talk about in the iDubs saga is technically Creator Clash 1, an influencer boxing event that iDubs himself orchestrated to put together a bunch of other influencers and box for charity. There isn't a ton to talk about in the storyline that we're following, but it was a relatively cool event that I watched and I thought was cool to watch a YouTuber put together something that big for a bunch of other YouTubers, very inspirational. The next chapter that we're actually going to talk about is, of course, the Sam Hyde incident. At this point in time, iDubs had started to dabble in these lengthy documentaries showcasing what I think are fallen internet icons, uh, the following of which he was going to do on an individual named Sam Hyde, who originally had a TV show called Million Dollar Extreme, and since then, I guess, was taken off TV and hasn't done a ton on TV since then. Sam Hyde had caught wind that Ian wanted to do this documentary with him and probably wasn't aiming to make this documentary be in the best light of Sam Hyde's current situation or what Ian thinks is his current situation. In a rather ingenious move, Sam Hyde decides to use this to his advantage by orchestrating a sort of false reality for Ian to document a, a fake office with fake execution, fake daily plans, things like driving around, smoking weed, uh, hiring some girl to be his drug addicted, drug addicted girlfriend, scaring Ian in one way or another, boxing him shirtless under a bridge and what have you. The takeaway here is that Ian got got, sort of. Sam Hyde did what Ian had done in a lot of these videos, where Ian had shown up to Tana Mojo's TanaCon and said the N-word live on camera and in front of a bunch of her fans to do this very extreme thing to sort of make her look bad. Sam Hyde had completely flipped the switch and had taken Ian, who had willingly come out, to make a documentary on his life and create a completely pseudo facade of a life for him to document on and in hopes that he would make a documentary video on something that was completely fake, uh, it, that's funny. That's real good comedy. That's the level of like satire 
and beautiful execution that we used to see in old iDubs. And to watch something like this get done to iDubs further deepen the cracks that were already laid among the people that were starting to lose this idolization that they had of Ian being the ultimate creator. Because iDubs didn't immediately put out the documentary footage that he had shot with Sam Hyde, Sam Hyde took the time to put out his own footage, explaining the entire ruse that they had put on and sharing the footage that they had interviewing Ian and in the different ways that they had trolled him over the nearly a week that he spent with the guys and their team. Ian would then later release his side or his editing of the documentary with similar footage. My understanding is that both people had stuff that they left out of the footage they shot and there is a little bit of iDub sort of knew that he was having a joke played on him and Sam Hyde sort of knew that iDub sort of knew. Again, I've only watched about 40 minutes of the total three or four hours of runtime, but the important thing to take away from this is that iDubs and Sam Hyde after this point were not on very good terms. In fact, during Creator Clash 1, very prominently, iDubs banned Sam Hyde and his team, anybody in his entourage, from coming into the building because he felt like it would be a nuisance, a distraction, and an overall impediment on what was supposed to be a big charity event that he had orchestrated. And naturally, Sam Hyde did not take this super well, and it became this whole drama between the two of them. So Creator Clash won the first boxing event that iDubs organizes with a bunch of influencers, YouTubers, Twitch streamers, TikTokers get together, box each other to sell tickets for charity, goes relatively well. A lot of tickets sold, a lot of money raised. It led to a second event down the line. However, it did sort of have this dark undertone with a lot of people discussing the fact that Sam Hyde had been banned from the event. Evidently not told in advance, got to the gate with his tickets that he paid many thousands of dollars for and was informed by security who had been given a picture of Sam Hyde and his crew and anybody who was near him that they were not allowed in the building and they would not be allowed in the building. This was the biggest event since Ian's video response to his girlfriend creating an OnlyFans that garnered this much attention, this much negative publicity on the internet. Obviously the event itself went super well, raised a ton of money. However, a lot of people were upset about the way that it seemed that Ian went about banning Sam Hyde from the event. Didn't tell him in advance, let him spend a ton of money on tickets, and then basically just didn't let him into the event with absolutely no prior notice. When the tickets were expensive, travel was expensive, there were a lot of people coming. Seems like a dick move. The backlash from that was relatively minimal. There were a lot of people just jumping on the bandwagon of people who had been hating on iDubs for all the things that we've discussed in earlier parts of this video. Now just jumping on to find another reason to yell at Ian on the internet for. Sam Hyde took this opportunity to run a bit of a press run in which he just sort of shit-talked Ian for a lot of different reasons, uh, claiming that the only reason that Ian even put on this boxing event is because he learned how to be a man, spending time with him, driving stick, boxing under a bridge, so on and so forth, insulting his girlfriend or his wife. I think they were married at that point uh, for, you know, everything from A to Z. You know that Hassan Piker? I'm coming to kill you in Los Angeles at your house! Come time for the second boxing event that's now just taken place maybe eight months after the first one, and there's a fighter on the card by the name of Froggy Fresh who decides to go out of his way to train with Sam High. Now, the details on this, I don't know if they've been completely ironed out, but the way that it unraveled at first seemed to be that Froggy Fresh got into a bit of a argument with Anissa's mother, so this is iDubs' mother-in-law on Twitter, and some combination of him making a joke about subscribing to Anissa's OnlyFans if he loses, arguing with her mother on Twitter, or training with Sam Hyde in general, resulted in him being removed from the Creator Clash card. A combination of hearing that Froggy Fresh has been removed from the card to what everybody assumed was simply because he got into some Twitter beef with Anissa's mother, which Anissa's mother was the one who antagonized the situation, and the fact that he would be forced to refund the $15,000 that he would give in for training, in a period of time where he's already basically done all the training and the card was only a month or two away, yet another reason for people to shit on iDubs. And at this point, I was on the train. This seemed like a dick move to pull out out of nowhere. Two weeks ago, and this is maybe a month after the Creator Clash event, iDubs uploads a video called Addressing the Froggy Fresh Drama, in which he showcases that there was a lengthy text exchange and a good amount of conversation that occurred, in which Ian very clearly uh, expressed his distaste for the fact that he was training with Sam Hyde, although did not kick him off the card specifically for that at that moment. Explained that he wished he would do this, he wished that he wouldn't make it such a public thing, that he was just doing everything he could to promote the fact that he was working with Sam Hyde when Ian had already gone through a tremendous amount of negative feedback 
a tremendous amount of online harassment for this individual from his first event. And I kind of feel for the dude because like you're putting in time, energy, money, God knows how many emails to get together 30, 40 different influencers who all have busy lives and other obligations to come together and do this big event for charity. It's not even like a big business endeavor that's going to like fund you for the rest of the year. You just want to make it happen because it's this like thing that feels like the next step in your career. And the entire thing is just being overshadowed by a dude who's butt hurt because he... For, like internet drama it's let's be fit it's basically internet drama right i don't know where everybody ends up the the comments on that video are horrendous nobody's giving the time of day to idubs my un maybe i'm interpreting it wrong like i don't really like read through the entire video like there's hours and hours that go into this whole drama that's taken the course over the last year right but it really does feel like froggy fresh was just shit talking the event doing everything he could to piss off ian and working with people that he said he didn't want to Ian got to the point where he was telling him, dude, can you just like not upload videos with Sam Hyde until after the thing? So I don't need to keep getting harassment about it or not harass my girlfriend, the event, the fighters, her mother. And it seemed like he was just doing everything to get kicked off the event. I don't, am I losing my mind here? If I go into a Burger King and tell the dude who owns the Burger King that his wife's a whore, Am I, am I really going to get surprised if they don't serve me burgers anymore? Is, is it not that simple? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the snowball that is the hate train, I don't know what the analogy I'm using is anymore, is too strong. It doesn't make any sense to try and make any sort of redemption arcs for iDubs at this point because it's so much easier to hate on the dude. Why have an opinion where you can just agree with what the 30,000 other people are saying? It's easier. I was supposed to cover those AI Balenciaga and swole Harry Potter memes in the same video, but I guess it's just going to be 20 minutes of me talking about drama. I'm officially a T channel, guys. I'm going to fucking kill my... In iDubs' latest video uploaded exactly 24 hours ago as of me recording this in this moment, is titled, I Miss the Old iDubs, in which Ian sort of explains his philosophy going forward, where he wants to move on, learn from, and distance himself from the content that he made in his past. Uh, he has privated all of the old content cop videos. In the video itself, he has apologized to all the people that he made a content cop on, saying that the videos that he made were very hateful, spiteful, uh, he probably used a word that I can't come up with off the top of my head, but he didn't want to spread that sort of hate and negativity in his content going forward. One piece of iDubs hate that I forgot to touch on until this moment that he touches on in this video is an interview that he did with Anthony Badia, a short segment of wit that went viral on Twitter for all the wrong reasons, in which he recounted a time in which he was at a convention or something, and one of the fans of his channel came up to him and just sort of said the N-word thinking that it was cool because, you know, he had that big clip where he went up to Tana Ma uh, Mon Mon Mongoose, Mon Monjo, and said the N-word to make fun of the fact that she had said the N-word so freely. iDubs talked about the fact where that was a real eye-opening moment for him, where he sort of realized that this... I'm, I'm going to say basement dwelling virgin. I don't know if those are the exact words he used, but he said something similar. This basement dwelling virgin was the representation of the people who were being pandered to in the videos that he was making. This was his audience, and he felt sad about that. He didn't like the fact that these people who were so open about, you know, this level of whatever you want to call it, racism, bigotry, edginess, uh, that isn't the type of people that he wanted to be representative of who he was. I think that's fair, but obviously a lot of people who grew up watching and idolizing iDubs, who took the fact that he was using the N-word and used it as a level of criticism against other people using the N-word, and there's a difference between using it in hate, not using it in hate, and whatever other points he made in the hours and hours of criticism that he spoke about other creators. The fact that he would go back on that and say that anybody who enjoyed that content is represented by this basement dwelling virgin and that he no longer wanted to associate with them really felt to these people to my understanding like he built himself up with an audience of people and now is just sort of distancing himself from them because he feels like he's better than the people who made him the content creator that he is if you're somebody who grew your audience playing fortnite and now four years later when you're the biggest fortnite creator you're sucking money from you know some other company to play valorant and you're telling everybody who plays Fortnite they suck, you should pay a little bit more respect to Fortnite because it made you who you are. 
But I really feel like this is a situation of growing from, you know, the algorithm of YouTube. Pretty much anybody on YouTube is going to have to do something that panders to people. Look at me right now. I'm doing a 20 minute explanation of internet drama when my channel is generally me laughing and looking at memes. We all got to do stuff that we know is going to do better in the algorithm so that we can do the stuff that we actually want to that might necessarily do worse. And back in the day, that was edgy YouTube content, tearing down other people, spewing as much negativity as you could because that's what spread the hate. That's what spread the that's what spread the likes. I mean, negativity gets more clicks. That's true even to this day. You can take a look at plenty of people who grew their channel from doing top 10 videos or by uploading full Disney movies back before copyright was a thing or doing prank on their mom and their dad and growing from that and now they do like book reviews and vlogs like I don't necessarily think that he's completely free of fault obviously that that interview that he had was a little bit misconstrued but I totally understand the guys there's a reason that I don't just do compilations of memes here like a lot of people say Smet why don't you cover this meme why don't you cover that meme why aren't you doing a video four times a week covering every one of these memes because I don't want to be one of those reddit text-to-speech channels that's just a meme compilation part 946 that uploads every 65 hours and has no personality like i know that's the sort of people that i'm gonna pander to if i make that sort of content i have the foresight to be able to know that this is going to be 13 year olds getting off of their early release on wednesdays coming home and just auto playing their youtube while they're getting killed in roblox and that's not who i want to pander to and when iDubbbz was getting God knows how many views and how much money when he was that young on top of the world, can you really blame him from A, doing it and B, moving on from it? There's got to be a level of understanding there. There are plenty of people in the comments that definitely see it for what it is and they see it as a good thing, which I do think is the way to take away this video. A lot of people who have just continued to ride the hate train uh, have just sort of viewed this as, wow, iDubbbz's his girlfriend is bullying him to make an apology video to, to take back all the edgy stuff he did as a teenager and to grow up and be an adult. But a lot of the people in the comments are saying stuff like, oh, the final content cop is the content cop on himself. And I feel like that's very poetic. And they're looking at it as an opportunity for him to grow and take all the best parts of what he learned when he was making those videos and apply it to stuff going forward that's going to be more sustainable and less detrimental to other creators on the platform. A lot of people were expressing the joy that they had in his effortless comedy, how he could make unboxing videos so funny just by opening stuff in an apartment. And I think the fact that he was still doing 5 million, 10 million views, making tier lists, looking at TikToks, like if you can make that sort of success off of stuff that generates positivity, I don't see why you would pick that over stuff that generates negativity. There's only like 20 good YouTubers on the platform and I'm tired of seeing people get canceled or lose the complete drive to make videos because of the negative hate, feedback, or backlash that they get over absolutely mundane stuff. To my knowledge, and again, I don't exactly do research for these videos, I do everything off of memory, which is my fault if I get stuff wrong, but to my understanding, iDubbbz hasn't solicited a minor. Right? He hasn't scammed people using some sort of alternate cryptocurrency. And all the things that he's done out of character has been in an effort for the betterment of his wife. Right? So between making two excellent boxing clashes that have brought a tremendous amount of people together, despite a few individuals' best efforts to make the entire show about them, he still managed to put out some fantastic videos in between all of those. He still managed to be a relatively stand-up citizen. He's not... I mean, look at the videos he's making. You can say that you're upset that he's not an edgy teenager anymore, but that means that he's maturing, getting better, even if that means that he's becoming more straight-lined, family-friendly, G-rated, ad-friendly, whatever you want to call it. It's not him spewing racial slurs and just uploading videos for the purpose of trying to take down another individual on the internet and destroy their life or their notoriety. That's got to just be a net positive, right? I just Googled iDubbbz to double check how old he is, and it says his full name is Ian Kane Jomha, which means he took Anissa's last name, which is fine, and I feel like I probably would have guessed that's what would have happened, but with as many haters as he has online, how has nobody made that joke that he took Anissa's last name? I feel like people would have been all over that. You, you haters aren't even good at making jokes. You see how bad at this you are? The, forget it. I, I've done enough hating on Mr. Beast. 
We got to do a more positive video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed me rambling about this for 25 minutes. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want more videos like this or if your pee-pee's big. Big shout out to the Patreon boy scrolling in the back. I'll catch you guys on the next one, yeah? Peace.